So now that we have our distributed switch in place, we have the physical host set up, we have vCenter set up, it's now time to put a game plan together and start the deployment of our nested lab environment. Now, the benefit of a nested lab environment is a couple things. Number one, we can snapshot and restore and practice some specific task over and over and over again and bring everything back to its original state whenever we need to. That's super convenient. And secondly, the benefit of a nested lab environment is that with one physical server, the one we just deployed, we can take that one physical server and yet still have an environment with three or four or 10 ESXi hosts all running within that one physical server. And that way we can emulate and simulate and get practice with a larger vSphere environment Although, to get it all going, we're only using one single physical piece of hardware. So let's leverage some of our drawing from the previous video, and let's put a game plan together regarding deploying these ESXi hosts as VMs inside of our nested lab environment. And here's what I propose we do. Instead of deploying ESXi-A as a VM in this nested lab environment and then repeating the whole process for ESXi-B and ESXi-C, let's go ahead and let's create one VM that we think is gonna be pretty much perfect. And then before we actually do the install of the ESXi software on that VM, what we can do is we can simply clone because we have vSphere running down here in the vCenter. We can simply do a cloning operation again before we start deploying the ESXi software on those VMs. And that way we can punch them out like cookie cutters. So we can get all the settings correct up front and then just simply create as many ESXi hosts as we want. And then for licensing, once again, we'll be using the vMug Advantage eval licenses, which are good for one year. So here's what I propose we do. Let's create an original VM as if we are gonna install ESXi on it. And then what we'll do is we'll take that original and we'll simply cookie cutter the VMs that we actually want. So regarding this VM, let's do the following. Let's go ahead and give this VM 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now you might think, well, that's a lot. Well, <laughs> down here on this physical host, I have 256 gigs. And if we say a VM has 64 gigs, it doesn't mean it's gonna use all that memory. So we can do some over-provisioning and probably get away with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and specify 64 gigs of RAM. If you're working with a physical host, which has a much smaller footprint of RAM, you might wanna reduce that down. But if we give it 64 gig, that's gonna be probably enough for anything we're gonna to wanna to do on these ESXi hosts, including running NSX Manager or setting up some of these hosts as host transport nodes inside the world of NSX. Let's give each of these VMs two hard disks and let's go ahead and make one 110 and another one 120 and those will be gig. Now you might think, well, hold the phone there. We may not have enough room if we start deploying a ton of ESXi hosts as VMs. We may not have enough room to support that. And that's why we are absolutely going to make sure we do thin provisioning. And that way they're only going to tie up on the physical resources on this ESXi 6 host down here. They're only going to tie up as much disk space as they're actually really using. Now, as far as CPUs, let's go ahead and let's assign 16 CPUs to this VM. Now, we won't be able to exceed what we actually have on the parent here, down here on ESXi 6. So if you have a host that has less number of CPUs, you may need to dial that down just a little bit. But if we say 16 CPUs on this platform, it's got a whole bunch to play with. And as a result, let's use that. And when we're in there configuring the details for the CPUs, let's go ahead and enable virtualization which is a property of the VM. And that way, this host right here, ESXi-A, running as a VM, will be able to go ahead and support VMs running in its copy of the hypervisor, which it will be running. And then for network interface cards, let's go ahead and let's give it six network interface cards. And we'll associate those network interface cards with these six port groups. So the first one, which would be VMNIC0, once we have ESXi up and running, we'll be going to port group T0, and VMNIC1, the second network interface card, will be going to port group T1 and so forth. And I also just thought about the fact that we also need to install ESXi. So let's also go ahead and add a third hard drive and let's make that first one just 50 gigs. We'll also do the thin provisioning. And that way we can install the ESXi software to that first hard drive, that first logical drive in the VM, which is 50 gig. And then we can use the other two drives as data stores. So as far as data stores go, Let's go ahead and use the 110, we'll call that DS1 for data store one, and the second one will be DS2. And if they're slightly different sizes, that'll make it super easy to identify which ones they are. And for the actual names of the data stores, let's go ahead and put the ESXi host name in front of it. So this would be ESXi A, DS1, and ESXi A, 
dash DS2, and that would be for the benefit of ESXIA. So right here, I'll just go ahead and put a question mark just to remind myself that that will be the variable based on the actual name of the ESXi host. Also, as we're talking about planning, let's also plan on IP addresses that we can use for management of these three ESXi hosts. And in my home network, I'm not using .31 or .32 or .33. So I'm gonna be using those for the management of these three ESXi hosts. Now the benefit of having these IP addresses on that same 192.168.1 network is that our management computer right here will still be able to reach out and individually manage those ESXi hosts, these nested VMs. And once we deploy the vCenter in this nested environment, we'll also be able to go ahead, if we use a management IP address on vCenter, that's also that 192.168.1 space, we can do all that management right from our management computer right here without having to do routing or any kind of trickery with VLANs to get from our management computer to those ESXi hosts. So let me take a screenshot of this game plan so I can have it available and let's get to work. Oh, and I just realized we are gonna need to have a copy of the ISO to deploy the ESXi software on these VMs as well. So in addition, let me go ahead and copy over to the data store on our ESXi 6. Let me go ahead and copy over there the actual ISO. And then when we create these VMs, we can specify that they've got a CD slash DVD drive and that their content is available from that data store. And that way they can boot up as if they have that ISO image sitting locally on them as a VM, and then they can do the install from that ISO. All right, so my first order of business is to get that ISO over there. So I'm gonna go here to the storage tab. Here's the local data store for ESXi6. And let's go to files, fantastic. And let's click on upload files. In fact, let me make a folder. So I'll click on new folder. I'll call this ISO images, click on okay. And then we'll go in that folder by double clicking on it. And then we'll click on upload files. So for my local file system, I just grabbed the ISO image for the hypervisor installer. And it is in the process of copying that right now from my management computer over to this data store, to this folder, and it is almost done. So based on the name here, this isn't the latest and greatest version of 8.x. However, once we deploy our ESXi host, we have vCenter running, we can also do updates of those nested ESXi hosts as well. So now that we have that ISO image available, let's go to the VM and templates view and let's expand that and let's create a folder. So I'm gonna right click on our data center called physical, and click on new folder. And then from the sub menu, we'll click on new VM and template folder. And I'm gonna call this nested lab VMs. And that way we know exactly where they're being stored in the hierarchy on our physical server. So we'll click on okay. And then we'll right click on nested lab VMs. And then we'll go ahead and create a new virtual machine by clicking right here, new virtual machine. And we'll go ahead and create a new virtual machine with this top option. We'll click on next. And let's go ahead and call this ESX OG for the original ESX that we're going to be using, and we'll clone from there. So we'll go ahead and we'll place that logically in this folder. We'll click on next. As far as the compute resource, we only have one, and that is this host right here. That's ESXi6. Fantastic. We'll click on next. Now it's asking us for storage for that VM, and the only data store we have is the data store on ESXi6. So we'll choose that, and we'll click on next. It's asking us effectively right here, what hardware version do we want to use for this new VM? I'll go ahead and choose ESXi 8.0 and later, click on next. And then it's asking about the guest OS and it's not Linux, it's not Windows, it's going to be other. And specifically, it's going to be VMware ESXi 8.0 or later. So I'm going to choose that option there. It's also giving us a little warning saying, hey, in a production environment, you, you know, using a nested ESXi host that's running inside of another ESXi host, maybe not the best idea, but for a lab environment, it's fantastic. So we'll click on next, and now we'll specify the details regarding how we want this VM to look. So we want each of our ESXi hosts to have, based on my notes, we want 16 CPUs. And as far as memory, based on our game plan, we want 64 gigs of RAM. Fantastic. And then also before we leave the actual CPU, let me go back up to CPU and expand that. We wanna make sure that we're enabling hardware virtualization, which effectively means that if we deploy an ESXi host as a VM, it'll also, that VM will also have the ability 
as an ESXi host to also support additional VMs on it. I'm also going to enable the virtualized CPU performance counters, and that looks good. So let me go back up. I'll take the defaults for reservations, limits, and shares, and let me just double check that that took. Sure enough, I've got the virtualization enabled. Fantastic. So 16 CPUs, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and for our hard disks, we want the first one to be 50 gigs. That's where we'll install the ESXi software. And then we want to make sure while we're here that we're going to say thin provisions. And that way we're not using and tying up a whole bunch of storage on the physical host and its data store unless we're actually using it. So we'll do thin provisioning there. Fantastic. Let's minimize that. And let's add two more hard disks while we're here. So we'll click right here and add new device and hard disk. And one more time, add new device, hard disk. So now we have these two additional hard disks. And let's make the first one based on our plan 110 gigs. And while we're here, we'll also make sure we're going to say thin provisioning. And then we'll collapse that. And then we'll go to the second disk. And we want that one to be 120 gig. And that way it'll just be easier when we see it to know which one's which. And then we'll expand that. And let's also set it up for thin provisioning. So that looks good. Thin provisioning. Fantastic. And for the network cards, we have one right here. And what we want is five more. We want six. At the end of the day, six VM NICs, zero through five. So we'll go ahead and we'll scroll up and click add new device. And then we'll go down here to network adapter. I'm going to repeat that a few times until we have a total of six network adapters. So I'm simply adding and adding and adding network adapters. And then we'll associate them with the correct port group. So one, two, three, four, five. And we need one more. Add new device, network adapter, and boom, we now have six. And I had to reduce my font just a little bit so I could actually see the option for network adapter. So I'm going to go back to a bigger view here for recording. And let's set up these network cards to map to the appropriate port groups. So for the first one, we want that to map. We'll click on Browse. We want that to map to port group T0. Click on OK. And the next one, that would be trunk 1. OK. And the next one, we want to go ahead and use 2 and OK. And the next one, and Browse. And that's going to be 3 and OK. And the next one, we'll browse for that. And that's going to be port group T4. And then for our final adapter, which is adapter 6, we want that to be associated with the port group called PGT5. And we chose to use 0 through 5 for our labels here for the port groups because at the end of the day, when we're using VMNICs, it's going to start at 0 and it's going to be easier to keep track of them that way. So here, the sixth interface on these new VMs will be associated with port group T5, and we'll click on OK. So let's confirm our work. We have 16 CPUs, 64 gigs of RAM under CPU. We have enabled hardware virtualization. Fantastic. And our memory, we have 64 gigs, hard disks, three of them. They're all set for thin provisioning. Let me just verify that real quick. Okay, thin on that one, and thin on that one, and thin on that one. Because this is going to be our template, effectively, we want to make sure that these are all set up correctly. And we'll continue scrolling down. Then I have six network interface cards, all associated with their appropriate distributed switch port groups. Fantastic. And then when this little VM boots up, we want to make sure it's going to have the ISO image for the ESXi hypervisor so it can boot from that and install ESXi. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll, for the new CD slash DVD drive, we'll specify that we want a data store based ISO file. And now it's asking us to browse for it. So we'll click here on this data store and then we'll go to ISO images and there it is. So we'll select it and click on OK. And then also extremely important, we want to tell this VM that when it powers on, it should connect to that ISO image. All right, so that part looks good. And let me see if there's anything else. So I think that's all we need. And let's go ahead and click on Next and Finish. And so that little VM, if we look at Recent Tasks, is being created and it's done. So it exists now. If we open up the folder for Nested Lab VMs, there it is. And before we start cloning this to our three new ESXi hosts that we're going to actually deploy, I suggest we take a quick peek at the settings just to make sure before we start deploying that we have the settings we think we do. So we'll click on Edit Settings for that VM. And 64, make sure virtualization is enabled. It is fantastic. We have 64 gigs of RAM. We have three disks. They're all set up for thin provisioning. Disk 1 is, disk 2 is, and disk 3 is fantastic. And we have the data store ISO image for the ESXi installer associated with the CD slash DVD drive. That looks good. And it's also set to connect at power on. And that looks fantastic. So we'll go ahead and close that. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and simply clone this pre-deployed VM 
and clone it three times for the benefit of ESXi A, B, and C, which we're going to deploy. So we'll right click on the ESX OG, on the original copy, if you will. And from the menu, we'll click on clone and we'll clone to virtual machine. And let's call this one ESXi A. And then as far as where to put it, we'll put it in the nested lab VMs folder, click on next. And we only have one physical resource. So we'll go ahead and use that parent ESXi host to support this VM with all the compute and memory resources and so forth and click on next. And we'll select the data store. And I wanna go ahead and make sure that we're using thin provisioning, click on next. So for the clone options, we can customize the hardware before we power it on. And then if we wanna have it automatically power on, we can do that as well. So just for the first one, let's just take a peek at the hardware just to make sure, double check, everything's good. We'll click on next. Virtualization is enabled, great, great, great. 64 gigs of RAM, three hard disks. We'll just spot check one of those. All thin provision, fantastic. We have six network cards and the ISO image, fantastic. We'll click on next and finish and away we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go over to that VM real quick. We'll right click on it. And then for the menu, we'll click on open remote console. I'll say, please always allow this to happen. Click on open remote console. I'm gonna say okay to any certificate warnings. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Let me close that window. And let's repeat this two more times for two more hosts. So we'll right click on the ESX original copy. We'll click on clone, clone to virtual machine, and we'll call this one ESXIB, just like that. And we'll go ahead and place that in the same logical folder, click on next. And then we'll choose the compute resource, the only compute resource we have, which is .106, that's ESXi6. We'll click on next. We'll specify the data store, specify thin provisioning, click on next. And then we can go ahead and power powered on. We don't need to double check the settings because it's gonna be the same as the first one. Finish, and then we'll repeat that one more time for ESXi-C. So we'll right click on the original, click on clone, click on clone to virtual machine, and then we'll call this one ESXi-C. And then we'll go ahead and deploy that in that folder. Click on next. We'll use the same compute resource, which is our ESXi6 host right there. Click on next. We'll specify the local data store on ESXi6. We'll say thin provisioning. Click on next. And then power that on as well. Click on next and finish. And now we have all three of those ESXi hosts.